Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com and I'm here today with Copic Colored Mondo Peony from Ellen Hudson. I'm going to do it in two different ways. So we're going to get right into it. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that down below. To start off with, I'm stamping the large peony with permanent black ink from Altenew. That's a Copic safe ink, so whatever one you have is perfect. Um, I stamped this in black first and then I realized what I really wanted to do was no line Copic coloring and so I went ahead and put that one aside. I'm going to go ahead and finish stamping both but then I decided to stamp this in pink pearl. That's from Altenew. It's kind of like a peachy pink and I'm going to do the leaves and frayed leaf. So these are really light colors and these are going to blend in with my Copics beautifully so that you won't even see them. So while I have that leaf in the right place, I went ahead and put the black um, flower back into my Misty and I went ahead and stamped those. So the greens that I'm going to use for the leaves today are YG67, 63, and 61. All of those are YGs, the yellow greens. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my darkest color then go to my mid-tone, then go to my lightest color, and then if I need to, I'm gonna, you know, go backwards and bring in some of that darkest color again. So this leaf has a fold in it, that's what I'm coloring right there, that the fold of a leaf or a petal is always going to be lighter, so you wanna use your lightest color there. Right up underneath the fold is going to be a casted shadow, so you're always gonna have your darkest color running up the length of that fold. And then what I like to do is leave a highlight to the left side of the vein. You could do either side, but that's just the side that I normally do. So I'll leave a highlight running down that vein in the center of the leaf just to add some greater dimension to the overall leaf. And there you have it. I'm just tidying up my edge. And I don't know why I decided to, well, maybe I do know. I, I don't normally start with the leaves. Normally I do the leaves last. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this small leaf. But this is a huge flower. So I have had this stamp set for several years. And when I bought it, I was not comfortable coloring at all. Um, so I think I watercolored it once or twice and then it's been in my drawer forever. I love it, I just wasn't a colorist. And so I skipped over the first few petals and didn't show you those because you couldn't really see what I was doing with the way that I was holding the marker. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna do maybe four of the flower petals so you can see that here. These are really large petals. This is probably the largest flower that I've ever Copic colored. And so I'm gonna use four different colors for these petals. I'm using R21, R22, R24, and R29. So because they're large petals, I've gone ahead and covered the entire petal with my lightest color first, and then I go to my darkest color, then my two mid-tones. And then if I need to add more um, shadow, then I'll go back and do that. Because it's a large petal, the reason I start with the lightest color is I get a better blend if I have a base coat of the lightest color on really large areas. Now, if I have a really small area, you know, like a really small crevice or even as we get to the center of the flower, I may start with my darkest color and then move out and I probably won't use all four colors. So it really just depends on the situation. But for large areas, I'll start with my lightest and then um, go right to my darkest and then move my way out from there. This is that base coat just helps me get a better blend. So here I'm darkening up again. It's the same thing. So pretty much if you can learn to identify the folds in a flower, the part that folds over and you can add a shadow underneath that fold and then keep the fold light, you're going to be able to color really any flower. So it's really just getting comfortable with that. And I actually really love coloring the folds and petals. I don't know what it is. I, it's just really relaxing to me. And um, so here I put down the base coat of the lightest color. I went in with my darkest color. Now I'm doing my mid-tones. One thing you want to be careful about when you're doing your flower petals is when you're doing your darkest color on the outer edge of the fold, 
you don't want to do the entire outer edge because that's really just going to look like an outline. You kind of want to do where it folds into the deeper recess, if that makes sense, or you just want to have like a broken line. So here, same thing. I'm not doing the entire edge. I'm kind of picking and choosing where I think the most recessed area is, and that's where I add my shadow because if you outline the whole thing, then you might as well have just stamped it in a darker color and have a red outline on your flower. So kind of think about that uh, as you're coloring. You just want to pick and choose those areas where you're going to add that darkest shadow. This will be the last petal that I show. And this one, of course, I do outline that total underneath area because that's a pretty big fold that overhangs pretty far. And then I'm just going to blend that out. And then, um, and some of them will get more shadow, you know, you can see this white area that I have right here. The flower above it is going to have shadow at the base of it. This one that I'm doing right here. So it is going to end up kind of being outlined if you think of it that way, but you've got shadow on the petal above it at the base and then shadow on the back end of that fold. So I finished the rest of the petals. I'm going to use a sentiment from the Mondo Magnolia stamp set. That's another one of my favorites. I think I got these at the same time. I'm stamping this in a black pigment ink because it just stamps so beautifully. And then I totally forgot to do the center of my flower. I usually end up getting stray ink somewhere. So I use the Tom Tombow Mono Sand Eraser anytime I get any smudges anywhere. And it usually takes care of it. So here... One of my favorite neutral families for Copics is the E70 family. So I'm using the R21 just to fill in a couple er other areas that were petals. I added just a touch of E70. Then I'm coming in with E74, which is the mid-tone. And then I'm going to come back in, do a little bit more of E70. And then my darkest color is going to be E79, I believe. We'll see that in just a second. So I'm kind of just blending that out a little bit. I'll add the E79, and then I might come back in the in with the with the midtone. So you can see I took off both caps there. That's because that particular marker is really juicy, and I didn't want to have any blobs develop. So if you have a really juicy marker, go ahead and take both caps off. That will stabilize the pressure inside the marker, and you won't have drips of um, ink coming out of your marker. So then I decided to add some black spatter. To do that, I used the Ulta Nude Jet Black Ink Spray. Here's the finished card. I didn't add any other embellishments and I made my own envelope with the We Are Memory Keepers punch board so that I could have a coordinating color. And I love how this card turned out. So then I had this other card that I had stamped in black and I was not about to cope with color another flower. <laughs> so what I decided to do instead was to leave the flower black and white and I decided to Copic color some stripes for the background. So I just have a Westcott ruler here, it's metal, and on the back side of it, it's lined with cork, which is awesome because this ruler stays in place with very little effort for me. I don't have to use a lot of pressure to hold it down. It really stays in place really nicely. The other thing I like about this ruler is it's a zero center ruler. So on one side, it's a regular ruler, starts from one at the left side and then continues on the side where I have my marker right now, in the center is a zero. So that's really cool if you're obviously trying to center something on your card. So. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in that, but I just find this ruler to be really handy. Um, so I'm basically using, I put some temporary adhesive on the back of my cardstock and just taped it down to the surface. And then I'm using my grid mat to, the space that I leave in between is a quarter of an inch. And I just keep moving my ruler. And I didn't have any issues with ink getting on the side of the ruler and, and like cross contamination or anything like that. Um, it seemed totally fine. So I just kept going. I didn't like clean the ruler in between strokes of different color markers. So I used these same exact colors. I didn't use all of the reds. I think I just used the two lightest and I think I used the three lightest colors for the reds. 
And then for the green, I only used YG61. That's the latest green. So you can see as I, I didn't mask this because I, I don't really love to cut masks. Um, as you would have seen earlier for the first one, I didn't actually cut that mask. I used the die to cut like two post-it notes that I stuck together. And then I just moved the mask back a little bit because you know if you die cut a mask, you're gonna have that white around the edge, right? That extra area. So I just moved it back a little bit so that I could stamp my leaves without any problem. So that sentiment is also from Mondo Magnolia, same thing. I'm gonna do some black spatter and that's that card that came together pretty easily. So completely different look. Um, it's a little artsy with the black and white flower and then obviously the stripes are coordinating color and there's the two cards together. I hope that you guys enjoyed these cards today. I definitely enjoyed pulling out this stamp set that I haven't used in so long. And I also felt really accomplished because as I said, like, there was no way I would have even attempted to color this flower a few years ago when I bought this stamp set. So it was really fun to see how my skills have progressed as I've continued making cards. So that was really fun. Um, if you're new to coloring, I probably wouldn't start with a stamp this large, but you can. You just need to break your flower up into small sections. So maybe do like four of the petals, take a break and come back to it later. Um, these petals are, like I said, nice and large, so they are fairly easy to color once you get your shadows down. But generally, I do recommend beginners start with smaller blooms. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, all of the supplies that I use will be linked down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That really helps me out in terms of YouTube, making sure that other people get to see this video. Otherwise, it's really hard to get my work out there. Leaving comments also really helps, so let me know what you think. and. If you decide to do this project, please tag me on Instagram at Notable Inc. because I'd love to see the work that, you know, was inspired by my video. Thanks so much for joining me today and until next time, breathe, ink, inspire.